Okay, boys and girls, so today for our PAS lesson, we're going to talk about a word that you might be feeling right now, frustrated. I know a lot of us have been stuck inside or we're with our family and while we love our family, especially if we have brothers and sisters, sometimes we get on each other's nerves. So you might be feeling the emotion frustrated. Hey, Quinn, can you show me a face that you would make if you were feeling frustrated? Ooh, that's a really frustrated face. So Quinn, how do you feel when you feel frustrated? I make fists and get mad. Yeah, like this, kind of like you have your hands like this. What are some things that make you frustrated? Well, when my toys don't work. Yeah, when your toys don't work, that is frustrating. Or maybe a game doesn't work. What about if Eli gets on your nerves or doesn't want you to play with him? Does that make you feel frustrated? Yeah, yeah. So is it okay to feel frustrated? Yeah, it's okay to have all our feelings because our feelings are part of us. But the big thing is what we do with our feelings. Hey, if you get really frustrated about something, what's something that's okay to do to deal with the frustration? Ask a parent to help you do it. Ooh, that's really good, especially if your toys aren't working. You know what? Mommies and daddies get frustrated too. I know some things we do is... Sometimes if I'm working on something and it's not working the way I want it to, sometimes I have to get up and walk away. I have to take a deep breath. Another thing is I really like to listen to music. And sometimes if I'm feeling frustrated, I listen to calming music. Not like angry or crazy music, but calming music. Anything else? What else do you do if you're feeling frustrated? What helps you to feel better? Um... Ask a parent. Asking a parent is a good strategy. Sometimes you just need some help. Sometimes you can't solve a problem on your own and you just need some help. So I can tell you there are some things that we probably shouldn't do when we're feeling frustrated. What's something that we shouldn't do when we're feeling frustrated? Um, don't make fists. Maybe you don't like, yeah. What about if someone's frustrating you, is it okay to hit them? No, how about call them names? No, or even be mean to them like, you dummy, why did you do that? Is it okay to do? No. No, so sometimes the best thing to do is take a deep breath, walk away from whatever is frustrating you, and maybe ask for some help, or do something that helps you to calm down, like read a book, or listen to music, or play with something else. What if you're stuck inside and you need to get a break? What can you do? I can just go outside. Oof, that's a good idea. We've been going for walks, haven't we? And sometimes, sometimes just getting out of the house, especially when you've been stuck inside the house, is a good way to kind of help you to not feel as frustrated, to take your mind off things. So it's okay to feel frustrated. The big thing is what we do with that frustration. We're all gonna feel it. We've all been stuck inside. We're all gonna get on each other's nerves. So the big thing is making good choices with feeling our feeling frustration. So today I'm gonna read us a story. We read this one too. This is about a boy who could have felt frustrated, but he kept trying. Now we have a song at Seville, it's called I'm Not Giving Up. And so this boy kept going, he didn't give up, even though some things could have been a little frustrating. So it's called A Curious Garden, and it's by Peter Brown. We really, really like Peter Brown. I love the colors in this book, and I really like how his um, plants look like living things. Like this almost looks like a person, and there's a butterfly and some birds. We'll keep a close eye out for those. There once was a city without gardens, or trees, or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. Dreary means not very happy, kind of sad or gloomy. 
Oof, look how dark that is. However, there was one boy who loved being outside. Even in drizzly days, while everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairway leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago. And since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there's only one thing for the curious boy to do. Hey, here's a side note. Don't ever go on railroad tracks. It's not really safe. But it makes for a good story. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last thing he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Do you see where the plants are? Can you point to them? Yeah, they look pretty, pretty gloomy themselves. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With Miles, oh, sorry, I skipped a page. Let me jump back. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned, and he had a few pruning problems. You prune and you cut things. But the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. So he could have given up. It didn't work the first time. He almost killed some of those plants. He cut off too much and he gave him too much water, but he didn't give up and he kept trying and it started to work out. He even started singing to those plants. La 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 la. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants began to feel like a real garden. They're starting to get, what color are they starting to get? Green. Yeah. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. That means it wanted to move. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. Oh my goodness, look how far that garden is moving from just a little garden to boom, it is blowing up. Whoa, what a cool picture. I love the blue and the green. Two of my favorite colors. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I love how he's kind of staring off and just enjoying looking. Sometimes it's nice just to enjoy looking at the sky. And look how everything's popping up. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time in the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell in the city that season. And for the first time since he had become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. How do you think he's feeling since he can't go to visit his, his plants? Sad. Maybe a little sad. He might be a little frustrated. Let's see what he does with that. Winter had taken a toll on the garden. Oh my goodness, what color is it now? Orange. What color should a garden be? Green. Yeah. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new, oh my goodness, did I skip another page? This is her, her daddy is very, uh, very excited to read this book. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over the railway. He could have been so sad that he didn't really do anything over the winter, but he used his time wisely and he planned how he was going to help his garden. So he's ready to go. Winter had taken a toll in the garden. 
But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. Oh my goodness, they were looking like that, and now they're looking like what? Green. Yeah, green and alive. And he's singing. I don't know if plants would live if I sang to them. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. Where are the, where's the plants growing? In a car. In a car and out of a side of a building. Oh my goodness, and in cracks. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Oh, where are they growing there? Stop sign. Yeah, people have to see the stop sign, so he has to take that off. And a fire hydrant, you have to, firemen have to be able to access that. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. Oh, it looks like a mysterious gift for that gentleman. And then, who? Hmm, who's that strange person leaving plants there? Who do you think that is? Liam. Yeah, he's in disguise. Hopefully I didn't skip any pages. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. Oh my goodness, it looks like Liam has inspired people to be gardeners themselves. Look at these beautiful rooftop uh, gardens. Wow, they're mowing a lawn up there with an old fashioned lawnmower that doesn't use gas. It's good for the environment. Wow, and all these people pruning. And look at all these kids who are following Liam and Liam looks a little bigger now. He must be growing up. There's Liam walking. Oh, Liam looks a lot bigger, and he has a friend there. There's some boys and girls on lily pads. Those are some big lily pads. And it looks like they made some shapes out of bushes, like a moose, and an elephant, and a giraffe. There's even these fancy tree houses. And look at this old warehouse. It looks very pretty because it's covered in all these beautiful plants. And he's even painting there, too. I like the pipes. I do, too. The pipes look really cool. Peter Brown draws good pipes. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. But of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. And if you look, Liam looks like he's grown up. And who does he have with him? Who do you think these people are with Liam? His kid. Yeah, it looks like his wife is there too. And they're all doing gardening together. You know what? It's a cool thing to be able to do something with your family. Something you share and enjoy. And look at that. That whole city is a beautiful green and blue. And if we can flip back to the beginning, we're gonna compare it. Look at the city there. What color was the whole city? Gray. Yeah, and look at it now. Doesn't that look amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, boys and girls, if you miss reading some of our Peter Brown books together, or any of our books that we read, if you go to um, DaytonMetroLibrary.com, you're able to download digital books. So, I hope you get a chance to explore that. Well, I've enjoyed meeting you with you this week, and I hope you guys have a good weekend. And next week is spring break, so you don't have to work on your packet. I'll still continue to call people and see how they're doing. You don't have to do schoolwork next week. I hope you're able to go outside. I hope it's sunny, and we'll see what happens after that. I hope I see you soon. Bye.